What is now often called Lorentz ether theory let has its roots in Hendrik Lorentz's theory of electrons, which was the final point in the development of the classical ether theories at the end of the 19th and at the beginning of the 20th century. Lorentz's initial theory was created between 1892 and 1895 and was based on a completely motionless ether. It explained the failure of the negative ether drift experiments to first order in V, C by introducing an auxiliary variable called local time for connecting systems at rest and in motion in the ether. In addition, the negative result of the Michelson Morley experiment led to the introduction of the hypothesis of length contraction in 1892. However, other experiments also produced negative results and, guided by Henry Poincaré's principle of relativity, Lorentz tried in 1899 and 1904 to expand his theory to all orders in V, C by introducing the Lorentz transformation. In addition, he assumed that also non-electromagnetic forces if they exist, transform like electric forces. However, Lorentz's expression for charge density and current were incorrect, so his theory did not fully exclude the possibility of detecting the ether. Eventually, it was Henry Poincaré who in 1905 corrected the errors in Lorentz's paper and actually incorporated non-electromagnetic forces including gravitation within the theory, which he called the new mechanics. Many aspects of Lorentz's theory were incorporated into special relativity senior with the works of Albert Einstein and Hermann Minkowski. Today Lett is often treated as some sort of Lorentzian or neo-Lorentzian interpretation of special relativity. The introduction of length contraction and time dilation for all phenomena in a preferred frame of reference, which plays the role of Lorentz's immobile ether, leads to the complete Lorentz transformation see the robertson mansori sexl test theory as an example. Because the same mathematical formalism occurs in both, it is not possible to distinguish between let and senior by experiment. However, in let the existence of an undetectable ether is assumed and the validity of the relativity principle seems to be only coincidental, which is one reason why senior is commonly preferred over let. Topic. Historical development Topic. Basic concept This theory, which was developed mainly between 1892 and 1906 by Lawrence and Poincaré, was based on the ether theory of Augustin Jean Fresnel, Maxwell's equations and the electron theory of Rudolf Clausus. Lorentz introduced a strict separation between matter electrons and ether, whereby in his model the ether is completely motionless, and it won't be set in motion in the neighborhood of ponderable matter. As Max Born later said, it was natural though not logically necessary for scientists of that time to identify the rest frame of the Lorentz ether with the absolute space of Isaac Newton. The condition of this ether can be described by the electric field E and the magnetic field H, where these fields represent the states of the ether with no further specification, related to the charges of the electrons. Thus an abstract electromagnetic ether replaces the older mechanistic ether models. Contrary to Clausus, who accepted that the electrons operate by actions at a distance, the electromagnetic field of the ether appears as a mediator between the electrons, and changes in this field can propagate not faster than the speed of light. Lorentz theoretically explained the Zeeman effect on the basis of his theory, for which he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1902. Joseph Lama found a similar theory simultaneously, but his concept was based on a mechanical ether. A fundamental concept of Lorentz's theory in 1895 was the theorem of corresponding states for terms of order v, c. This theorem states that a moving observer with respect to the ether can use the same electrodynamic equations as an observer in the stationary ether system, thus they are making the same observations. <laughs> <laughs> Length contraction A big challenge for this theory was the Michelson–Morley experiment in 1887. According to the theories of Fresnel and Lorentz a relative motion to an immobile ether had to be determined by this experiment, however, the result was negative. Michelson himself thought that the result confirmed the ether drag hypothesis, in which the ether is fully dragged by matter. 
However, other experiments like the Fizeau experiment and the effect of aberration disproved that model. A possible solution came in sight, when in 1889 Oliver Heaviside derived from the Maxwell's equations that the magnetic vector potential field around a moving body is altered by a factor of 1 minus V 2 C 2 Display style SQRT one V carrot two C carrot two. Based on that result and to bring the hypothesis of an immobile ether in accordance with the Michelson Morley experiment, George Fitzgerald in eighteen eighty nine qualitatively and independently of him Lawrence in eighteen ninety two already quantitatively suggested that not only the electrostatic fields, but also the molecular forces are affected in such a way that the dimension of a body in the line of motion is less by the value V. 2 2 c 2 display style v caret 2 2 c caret 2 then the dimension perpendicularly to the line of motion however an observer co-moving with the earth would not notice this contraction because all other instruments contract at the same ratio in 1895 lawrence proposed three possible explanations for this relative contraction the body contracts in the line of motion and preserves its dimension perpendicularly to it. The dimension of the body remains the same in the line of motion, but it expands perpendicularly to it. The body contracts in the line of motion, and expands at the same time perpendicularly to it. Although the possible connection between electrostatic and intermolecular forces was used by Lawrence as a plausibility argument, the contraction hypothesis was soon considered as purely ad hoc. It is also important that this contraction only affected the space between the electron but not the electrons themselves, therefore the name, intermolecular hypotheses, was sometimes used of this effect. The so-called length contraction without expansion perpendicularly to the line of motion and by the precise value L equals L 0 1 minus V 2 C 2 display style L equals L underscore 0 C D O T S Q R T 1 V carrot 2 C carrot 2 where L 0 is the length at rest in the ether was given by Lama in 1897 and by Lawrence in 1904 in the same year Lawrence also argued that also electrons themselves are affected by this contraction for further development of this concept, see the section hashtag Lawrence Transformation. <laughs> Local time An important part of the theorem of corresponding states in 1892 and 1895 was the local time t equals t minus v X C two display style t equals t v x c caret two, where t is the time coordinate for an observer resting in the ether, and t is the time coordinate for an observer moving in the ether. Waldemar Voigt had previously used the same expression for local time in 1887 in connection with the Doppler effect and an incompressible medium. With the help of this concept, Lorentz could explain the aberration of light, the Doppler effect, and the Fizeau experiment, i.e., measurements of the Fresnel drag coefficient by Hippolyta Fizeau in moving and also resting liquids. While for Lorentz length contraction was a real physical effect, he considered the time transformation only as a heuristic working hypothesis and a mathematical stipulation to simplify the calculation from the resting to a «fictitious» moving system. Contrary to Lorentz, Poincaré saw more than a mathematical trick in the definition of local time, which he called Lorentz's «most ingenious idea». In The Measure of Time he wrote in 1898, in 1900 Poincaré interpreted local time as the result of a synchronization procedure based on light signals. He assumed that two observers A and B which are moving in the ether, synchronize their clocks by optical signals. Since they believe to be at rest they must consider only the transmission time of the signals and then crossing their observations to examine whether their clocks are synchronous. However, from the point of view of an observer at rest in the ether the clocks are not synchronous and indicate the local time t equals 
T minus V X C two Display style T equals T V X C carrot two. But because the moving observers don't know anything about their movement, they don't recognize this. In 1904 he illustrated the same procedure in the following way, A sends a signal at the time 0 to B, which arrives at the time T. B also sends a signal at the time 0 to A, which arrives at the time T. If in both cases T has the same value the clocks are synchronous, but only in the system in which the clocks are at rest in the ether. So according to Darigal Poincare understood local time as a physical effect just like length contraction, in contrast to Lawrence, who used the same interpretation not before 1906. However, contrary to Einstein, who later used a similar synchronization procedure which was called Einstein synchronization, Darigal says that Poincare had the opinion that clocks resting in the ether are showing the true time, however, at the beginning it was unknown that local time includes what is now known as time dilation. This effect was first noticed by Lama 1897, who wrote that individual electrons describe corresponding parts of their orbits in times shorter for the ether system in the ratio epsilon minus 1 2 display style var epsilon caret minus 1 half or 1 minus 1 2 v 2 c 2 display style 1 1 half v caret 2 c caret 2 quote dot and in 1899 also Lawrence noted for the frequency of oscillating electrons that in s the time of vibrations be k epsilon display style k var epsilon times as great as in s0 where s0 is the ether frame s the mathematical fictitious frame of the moving observer k is 1 minus v 2 C two display style sqrt one v carrot two c carrot two and epsilon display style var epsilon is an undetermined factor. Topic: Lorentz transformation. While local time could explain the negative ether drift experiments to first order to V, C, it was necessary, due to other unsuccessful ether drift experiments like the Trouton Noble experiment, to modify the hypothesis to include second order effects. The mathematical tool for that is the so called Lorentz transformation. It was Voigt in 1887 who already derived a similar set of equations, however, with a different scale factor. Afterwards, Lama in 1897 and Lawrence in 1899 derived equations in an algebraically equivalent form to those, which are used up to this day. However, Lawrence used an undetermined factor L in his transformation. In his paper Electromagnetic Phenomena in a System Moving with Any Velocity Smaller Than That of Light, 1904, Lawrence attempted to create such a theory, according to which all forces between the molecules are affected by the Lorentz transformation, in which Lorentz set the factor L to unity in the same manner as electrostatic forces. In other words, Lorentz attempted to create a theory in which the relative motion of Earth and ether is nearly or fully undetectable. Therefore, he generalized the contraction hypothesis and argued that not only the forces between the electrons, but also the electrons themselves are contracted in the line of motion. However, Max Abraham 1904 quickly noted a defect of that theory. Within a purely electromagnetic theory, the contracted electron configuration is unstable and one has to introduce non electromagnetic force to stabilize the electrons. Abraham himself questioned the possibility of including such forces within the theory of Lorentz. So it was Poincare 1905, on 5 June 1905, who introduced the so-called Poincare stresses to solve that problem. Those stresses were interpreted by him as an external, non-electromagnetic pressure, which stabilized the electrons and also served as an explanation for length contraction. Although he argued that Lorentz succeeded in creating a theory which complies to the postulate of relativity, he showed that Lorentz's equations of electrodynamics were not fully Lorentz covariant. 
so by pointing out the group characteristics of the transformation Poincaré demonstrated the Lorentz covariance of the Maxwell-Lorentz equations and corrected Lorentz's transformation formulae for charge density and current density. He went on to sketch a model of gravitation INCL, gravitational waves, which might be compatible with the transformations. Poincaré used for the first time the term Lorentz transformation, and he gave them a form which is used up to this day, where display style L is an arbitrary function of epsilon display style var epsilon, which must be set to unity to conserve the group characteristics. He also set the speed of light to unity. X equals k x plus epsilon t y equals y z equals z t equals k t plus epsilon x Display style x caret prime equals k l left x plus var epsilon t right q quad y caret prime equals l y q quad z caret prime equals l z q quad t caret prime equals k l left t plus var epsilon x right k equals one one minus epsilon two Display style k equals frac one sqrt one var epsilon caret two. A substantially extended work, the so-called Palermo paper, was submitted by Poincaré on the 23rd of July 1905, but was published in January 1906 because the journal only appeared twice a year. He spoke literally of the postulate of relativity. He showed that the transformations are a consequence of the principle of least action. He demonstrated in more detail the group characteristics of the transformation, which he called Lorentz group, and he showed that the combination x two plus y two plus z two minus c two t Two Display style x carrot two plus y carrot two plus z carrot two c carrot two t carrot two is invariant. While elaborating his gravitational theory, he noticed that the Lorentz transformation is merely a rotation in four dimensional space about the origin by introducing C T minus one Display style court SQRT minus one as a fourth imaginary coordinate, and he used an early form of four vectors. However, Poincaré later said the translation of physics into the language of four-dimensional geometry would entail too much effort for limited profit, and therefore he refused to work out the consequences of this notion. This was later done by Minkowski. C. The shift to relativity. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Electromagnetic mass. J. J. Thomson and others noticed, that electromagnetic energy contributes to the mass of charged bodies by the amount m equals 4 3 e c 2 display style m equals 4 thirds e c caret 2 which was called electromagnetic or apparent mass Another derivation of some sort of electromagnetic mass was conducted by Poincaré 1900. By using the momentum of electromagnetic fields, he concluded that these fields contribute a mass of E E M C 2 display style E underscore M C caret 2 to all bodies, which is necessary to save the center of mass theorem. As noted by Thomson and others, this mass increases also with velocity. Thus in 1899, Lawrence calculated that the ratio of the electron's mass in the moving frame and that of the ether frame is k 3 epsilon 
display style k caret 3 var epsilon parallel to the direction of motion and k epsilon display style k var epsilon perpendicular to the direction of motion where k equals 1 minus v 2 c 2 Display style k equals sqrt one v caret two c caret two and epsilon display style var epsilon is an undetermined factor. And in 1904 he set epsilon equals one display style var epsilon equals one. Arriving at the expressions for the masses in different directions, longitudinal and transverse, m l equals m zero one minus v two c two three m t equals m Zero one minus V two C two Display style M underscore L equals frac M underscore zero left SQRT one frac V carrot two C carrot two right carrot three quad M underscore T equals frac M underscore zero SQRT one frac V carrot two C carrot two where M zero equals four three E E M C two Display style M underscore zero equals frac four three frac E underscore M C carrot two Many scientists now believe that the entire mass and all forms of forces were electromagnetic in nature. This idea had to be given up, however, in the course of the development of relativistic mechanics. Abraham 1904 argued, as described in the preceding section hashtag Lorentz transformation, that non-electrical binding forces were necessary within Lorentz's electrons model. But Abraham also noted that different results occurred, dependent on whether the m-mass is calculated from the energy or from the momentum. To solve those problems, Poincaré in 1905 and 1906 introduced some sort of pressure of non-electrical nature, which contributes the amount minus 1 3 e c 2 display style 1 e c 2 to the energy of the bodies, and therefore explains the four-thirds factor in the expression for the electromagnetic mass-energy relation. However, while Poincaré's expression for the energy of the electrons was correct, he erroneously stated that only the m energy contributes to the mass of the bodies. The concept of electromagnetic mass is not considered anymore as the cause of mass per se, because the entire mass, not only the electromagnetic part, is proportional to energy and can be converted into different forms of energy, which is explained by Einstein's mass-energy equivalence. Gravitation Lorentz's theories In 1900 Lorentz tried to explain gravity on the basis of the Maxwell equations. He first considered a Lesage-type model and argued that there possibly exists a universal radiation field, consisting of very penetrating M radiation, and exerting a uniform pressure on every body. Lorentz showed that an attractive force between charged particles would indeed arise, if it is assumed that the incident energy is entirely absorbed. This was the same fundamental problem which had afflicted the other Lesage models, because the radiation must vanish somehow and any absorption must lead to an enormous heating. Therefore, Lorentz abandoned this model. In the same paper, he assumed like Ottaviano Fabrizio Mossotti and Johann Carl Friedrich Zollner that the attraction of opposite charged particles is stronger than the repulsion of equal charged particles. 
The resulting net force is exactly what is known as universal gravitation, in which the speed of gravity is that of light. This leads to a conflict with the law of gravitation by Isaac Newton, in which it was shown by Pierre Simon Laplace that a finite speed of gravity leads to some sort of aberration and therefore makes the orbits unstable. However, Lawrence showed that the theory is not concerned by Laplace's critique, because due to the structure of the Maxwell equations only effects in the order v2, c2 arise. But Lawrence calculated that the value for the perihelion advance of Mercury was much too low. He wrote, in 1908 Poincaré examined the gravitational theory of Lorentz and classified it as compatible with the relativity principle, but like Lorentz, he criticized the inaccurate indication of the perihelion advance of Mercury. Contrary to Poincaré, Lorentz in 1914 considered his own theory as incompatible with the relativity principle and rejected it. Topic: <laughs> Lorentz invariant gravitational law. Poincaré argued in 1904 that a propagation speed of gravity which is greater than c is contradicting the concept of local time and the relativity principle. He wrote, However, in 1905 and 1906 Poincaré pointed out the possibility of a gravitational theory, in which changes propagate with the speed of light and which is Lorentz covariant. He pointed out that in such a theory the gravitational force not only depends on the masses and their mutual distance, but also on their velocities and their position due to the finite propagation time of interaction. On that occasion Poincaré introduced four vectors. Following Poincaré, also Minkowski and Arnold Zomerfeld tried to establish a Lorentz invariant gravitational law. However, these attempts were superseded because of Einstein's theory of general relativity, c. The shift to relativity. Topic: Principles and conventions. Topic: Constancy of light. Already in his philosophical writing on time measurements 1898, Poincaré wrote that astronomers like Ole Romer, in determining the speed of light, simply assume that light has a constant speed, and that this speed is the same in all directions. Without this postulate it would not be possible to infer the speed of light from astronomical observations, as Romer did based on observations of the moons of Jupiter. Poincaré went on to note that Roma also had to assume that Jupiter's moons obey Newton's laws, including the law of gravitation, whereas it would be possible to reconcile a different speed of light with the same observations if we assumed some different probably more complicated, laws of motion. According to Poincaré, this illustrates that we adopt for the speed of light a value that makes the laws of mechanics as simple as possible. This is an example of Poincaré's conventionalist philosophy. Poincaré also noted that the propagation speed of light can be, and in practice often is, used to define simultaneity between spatially separate events. However, in that paper he did not go on to discuss the consequences of applying these conventions to multiple relatively moving systems of reference. This next step was done by Poincaré in 1900, when he recognized that synchronization by light signals in Earth's reference frame leads to Lorentz's local time, see the section on «local time» above. And in 1904 Poincaré wrote <laughs> <laughs> Principle of relativity In 1895 Poincaré argued that experiments like that of Michelson-Morley show that it seems to be impossible to detect the absolute motion of matter or the relative motion of matter in relation to the ether. And although most physicists had other views, Poincaré in 1900 stood to his opinion and alternately used the expressions, "...principle of relative motion", and "...relativity of space". He criticized Lorentz by saying, that it would be better to create a more fundamental theory, which explains the absence of any ether drift, than to create one hypothesis after the other. In 1902 he used for the first time the expression, "...principle of relativity". In 1904 he appreciated the work of the mathematicians, who saved what he now called the "...principle of relativity." with the help of hypotheses like local time, but he confessed that this venture was possible only by an accumulation of hypotheses. 
and he defined the principle in this way according to Miller based on Lawrence's theorem of corresponding states the principle of relativity, according to which the laws of physical phenomena must be the same for a stationary observer as for one carried along in a uniform motion of translation, so that we have no means, and can have none, of determining whether or not we are being carried along in such a motion." Referring to the critique of Poincaré from 1900, Lawrence wrote in his famous paper in 1904, where he extended his theorem of corresponding states. Surely, the course of inventing special hypotheses for each new experimental result is somewhat artificial. It would be more satisfactory, if it were possible to show, by means of certain fundamental assumptions, and without neglecting terms of one order of magnitude or another, that many electromagnetic actions are entirely independent of the motion of the system. One of the first assessments of Lawrence's paper was by Paul Langevin in May 1905. According to him, this extension of the electron theories of Lawrence and Lama led to the physical impossibility to demonstrate the translational motion of the Earth. However, Poincaré noticed in 1905 that Lawrence's theory of 1904 was not perfectly Lawrence invariant. In a few equations such as Lawrence's expression for current density it was admitted by Lawrence in 1921 that these were defects. As this required just minor modifications of Lawrence's work, also Poincaré asserted that Lawrence had succeeded in harmonizing his theory with the principle of relativity. It appears that this impossibility of demonstrating the absolute motion of the Earth is a general law of nature. Lawrence tried to complete and modify his hypothesis in order to harmonize it with the postulate of complete impossibility of determining absolute motion. It is what he has succeeded in doing in his article entitled Electromagnetic Phenomena in a System Moving with Any Velocity Smaller Than That of Light Lawrence, 1904b. In his Palermo paper 1906, Poincaré called this, "...the postulate of relativity, and although he stated that it was possible this principle might be disproved at some point and in fact he mentioned at the paper's end that the discovery of magneto-cathode rays by Paul Ulrich Villard 1904 seems to threaten it, he believed it was interesting to consider the consequences if we were to assume the postulate of relativity was valid without restriction." This would imply that all forces of nature not just electromagnetism must be invariant under the Lorentz transformation. In 1921 Lorentz credited Poincaré for establishing the principle and postulate of relativity and wrote, I have not established the principle of relativity as rigorously and universally true. Poincaré, on the other hand, has obtained a perfect invariance of the electromagnetic equations, and he has formulated the postulate of relativity, terms which he was the first to employ. <laughs> Ether Poincaré wrote in the sense of his conventionalist philosophy in 1889. Whether the ether exists or not matters little, let us leave that to the metaphysicians. What is essential for us is, that everything happens as if it existed, and that this hypothesis is found to be suitable for the explanation of phenomena. After all, have we any other reason for believing in the existence of material objects? That, too, is only a convenient hypothesis, only, it will never cease to be so, while some day, no doubt, the ether will be thrown aside as useless." He also denied the existence of absolute space and time by saying in 1901, 1. There is no absolute space, and we only conceive of relative motion, and yet in most cases mechanical facts are enunciated as if there is an absolute space to which they can be referred. Two. There is no absolute time. When we say that two periods are equal, the statement has no meaning, and can only acquire a meaning by a convention. 3. Not only have we no direct intuition of the equality of two periods, but we have not even direct intuition of the simultaneity of two events occurring in two different places. I have explained this in an article entitled, Monsieur du Temps, 1898, 4. Finally, is not our Euclidean geometry in itself only a kind of convention of language? However, Poincaré himself never abandoned the ether hypothesis and stated in 1900, 
Does our ether actually exist? We know the origin of our belief in the ether. If light takes several years to reach us from a distant star, it is no longer on the star, nor is it on the Earth. It must be somewhere, and supported, so to speak, by some material agency." And referring to the Fizeau experiment, he even wrote, "...the ether is all but in our grasp." He also said the ether is necessary to harmonize Lawrence's theory with Newton's third law. Even in 1912 in a paper called, "...the quantum theory," Poincaré ten times used the word, "...ether," and described light as, "...luminous vibrations of the ether." And although he admitted the relative and conventional character of space and time, he believed that the classical convention is more convenient and continued to distinguish between true time in the ether and apparent time in moving systems. Addressing the question if a new convention of space and time is needed, he wrote in 1912, Shall we be obliged to modify our conclusions? Certainly not, we had adopted a convention because it seemed convenient and we had said that nothing could constrain us to abandon it. Today some physicists want to adopt a new convention. It is not that they are constrained to do so, they consider this new convention more convenient, that is all. And those who are not of this opinion can legitimately retain the old one in order not to disturb their old habits, I believe, just between us, that this is what they shall do for a long time to come. Also Lawrence argued during his lifetime that in all frames of reference this one has to be preferred, in which the ether is at rest. Clocks in this frame are showing the real time and simultaneity is not relative. However, if the correctness of the relativity principle is accepted, it is impossible to find this system by experiment. The shift to relativity Special relativity In 1905, Albert Einstein published his paper on what is now called special relativity. In this paper, by examining the fundamental meanings of the space and time coordinates used in physical theories, Einstein showed that the «effective» coordinates given by the Lorentz transformation were in fact the inertial coordinates of relatively moving frames of reference. From this followed all of the physically observable consequences of let, along with others, all without the need to postulate an unobservable entity the ether. Einstein identified two fundamental principles, each founded on experience, from which all of Lorentz's electrodynamics follows. 1. The laws by which physical processes occur are the same with respect to any system of inertial coordinates the principle of relativity. 2. In empty spacelight propagates at an absolute speed c in any system of inertial coordinates the principle of the constancy of light taken together along with a few other tacit assumptions such as isotropy and homogeneity of space, these two postulates lead uniquely to the mathematics of special relativity. Lorentz and Poincaré had also adopted these same principles, as necessary to achieve their final results, but didn't recognize that they were also sufficient, and hence that they obviated all the other assumptions underlying Lorentz's initial derivations many of which later turned out to be incorrect. Therefore, special relativity very quickly gained wide acceptance among physicists, and the 19th century concept of a luminiferous ether was no longer considered useful. Einstein's 1905 presentation of special relativity was soon supplemented, in 1907, by Hermann Minkowski, who showed that the relations had a very natural interpretation in terms of a unified four dimensional space time, in which absolute intervals are seen to be given by an extension of the Pythagorean theorem. Already in 1906, Poincare anticipated some of Minkowski's ideas. See the section, Lorentz transformation. The utility and naturalness of the representations by Einstein and Minkowski contributed to the rapid acceptance of special relativity, and to the corresponding loss of interest in Lorentz's ether theory. In 1909 and 1912, Einstein explained, in 1907 Einstein criticized the «ad hoc» character of Lorentz's contraction hypothesis in his theory of electrons, because according to him it was an artificial assumption to make the Michelson–Morley experiment conform to Lorentz's stationary ether and the relativity principle. Einstein argued that Lorentz's «local time» can simply be called 
time and he stated that the immobile ether as the theoretical foundation of electrodynamics was unsatisfactory. He wrote in 1920, Minkowski argued that Lawrence's introduction of the contraction hypothesis sounds rather fantastical, since it is not the product of resistance in the ether but a gift from above. He said that this hypothesis is completely equivalent with the new concept of space and time though it becomes much more comprehensible in the framework of the new spacetime geometry. However, Lawrence disagreed that it was ad hoc, and he argued in 1913 that there is little difference between his theory and the negation of a preferred reference frame, as in the theory of Einstein and Minkowski, so that it is a matter of taste which theory one prefers. <laughs> Mass energy equivalence. It was derived by Einstein 1905 as a consequence of the relativity principle that inertia of energy is actually represented by E C 2 display style E C 2 but in contrast to Poincaré's 1900 paper Einstein recognized that matter itself loses or gains mass during the emission or absorption so the mass of any form of matter is equal to a certain amount of energy, which can be converted into and reconverted from other forms of energy. This is the mass-energy equivalence, represented by E equals m c 2 display style E equals m c 2 So Einstein didn't have to introduce fictitious Masses and also avoided the perpetual motion problem, because according to Darigal, Poincare's radiation paradox can simply be solved by applying Einstein's equivalence. If the light source loses mass during the emission by E C 2 E C 2 the contradiction in the momentum law vanishes without the need of any compensating effect in the ether. Similar to Poincaré, Einstein concluded in 1906 that the inertia of electromagnetic energy is a necessary condition for the center of mass theorem to hold in systems, in which electromagnetic fields and matter are acting on each other. Based on the mass-energy equivalence he showed that emission and absorption of M radiation and therefore the transport of inertia solves all problems. On that occasion, Einstein referred to Poincaré's 1900 paper and wrote, also Poincaré's rejection of the reaction principle due to the violation of the mass conservation law can be avoided through Einstein's E equals m c 2 display style E equals m c 2 because mass conservation appears as a special case of the energy conservation law General relativity The attempts of Lawrence and Poincaré and other attempts like those of Abraham and Gunnar Nordström to formulate a theory of gravitation were superseded by Einstein's theory of general relativity. This theory is based on principles like the equivalence principle, the general principle of relativity, the principle of general covariance, geodesic motion, local Lorentz covariance the laws of special relativity apply locally for all inertial observers, and that spacetime curvature is created by stress energy within the spacetime. In 1920 Einstein compared Lorentz's ether with the «gravitational ether» of general relativity. He said that immobility is the only mechanical property of which the ether has not been deprived by Lorentz, but contrary to the luminiferous and Lorentz's ether the ether of general relativity has no mechanical property, not even immobility. <laughs> Priority Some claim that Poincaré and Lorentz are the true founders of special relativity, not Einstein. For more details see the article on this dispute. Topic: <laughs> Later activity. Viewed as a theory of elementary particles, Lorentz's electron ether theory was superseded during the first few decades of the 20th century, first by quantum mechanics and then by quantum field theory. 
As a general theory of dynamics, Lawrence and Poincaré had already by about 1905 found it necessary to invoke the principle of relativity itself in order to make the theory match all the available empirical data. By this point, most vestiges of a substantial ether had been eliminated from Lawrence's ether theory, and it became both empirically and deductively equivalent to special relativity. The main difference was the metaphysical postulate of a unique absolute rest frame, which was empirically undetectable and played no role in the physical predictions of the theory, as Lawrence wrote in 1909, 1910 published 1913, 1913 published 1914, or in 1912 published 1922. As a result, the term, Lawrence Ether Theory, is sometimes used today to refer to a neo Lawrencean interpretation of special relativity. The prefix Neo is used in recognition of the fact that the interpretation must now be applied to physical entities and processes such as the standard model of quantum field theory that were unknown in Lawrence's day. Subsequent to the advent of special relativity, only a small number of individuals have advocated the Lawrencean approach to physics. Many of these, such as Herbert E. Ives, who, along with G. R. Stilwell, performed the first experimental confirmation of time dilation, have been motivated by the belief that special relativity is logically inconsistent, and so some other conceptual framework is needed to reconcile the relativistic phenomena. For example, Ives wrote, The principle of the constancy of the velocity of light is not merely ununderstandable, it is not supported by objective matters of fact, it is untenable. However, the logical consistency of special relativity as well as its empirical success is well established, so the views of such individuals are considered unfounded within the mainstream scientific community. John Stuart Bell advocated teaching special relativity first from the viewpoint of a single Lorentz inertial frame, then showing that Poincaré invariance of the laws of physics such as Maxwell's equations is equivalent to the frame-changing arguments often used in teaching special relativity. Because a single Lorentz inertial frame is one of a preferred class of frames, he called this approach Lorentzian in spirit. Also, some test theories of special relativity use some sort of Lorentzian framework. For instance, the Robertson Mansori SEXL test theory introduces a preferred ether frame and includes parameters indicating different combinations of length and times changes. If time dilation and length contraction of bodies moving in the ether have their exact relativistic values, the complete Lorentz transformation can be derived and the ether is hidden from any observation, which makes it kinematically indistinguishable from the predictions of special relativity. Using this model, the michelson morley experiment, Kennedy-Thorndike experiment, and Ives-Stilwell experiment put sharp constraints on violations of Lorentz invariance. 